In this video, how screwing Tesla over would be the best possible thing that could happen to Tesla, and how not screwing Tesla over would be equally as good. By the way, no, I do mean that. It does actually make sense, and watch the video, you'll find out why. Something very big and important is currently happening, not getting a lot of attention. It has big implications, not just for Tesla, but for the global automotive market. Now, remember a while ago when Tesla announced a Gigafactory in Mexico? And then more recently announced that they were putting that on hold for two reasons. One, a little bit of uncertainty. We'll talk about that more in a moment. But two, more importantly, they decided, and in retrospect, I mean, <laughs> a pretty obvious thing to do. They would first begin producing the next generation dedicated robotaxis in Austin because everyone's there. And if you're going to develop the production systems and start production, wouldn't it make sense to try this and get this nailed first in Austin where everybody is before you expand internationally and start ramping this thing up? Kind of like how Tesla figured out how to make Model 3s at scale in Fremont first before they went and built a dedicated factory over in China in Shanghai to start pumping out Model 3s then eventually Model Ys. Let's watch a bit of this video and then I'll expand more on why this is so important for Tesla. Electric vehicle revolution shaped by trade tensions. Concern around competition from China is weighing on American lawmakers and auto companies. China's growing global auto dominance has some lawmakers on edge. At the center of that conversation is a country known for its beaches and its ideal trade proximity to the U.S., Mexico. The Chinese have targeted Mexico as a prime export market. Across the U.S. border, the country has seen an influx of Chinese-made new energy cars. The Chinese automakers came to the country very aggressively. And now some Chinese automakers, including Tesla rival BYD, are announcing plans to build factories in Mexico. But for the U.S., there's concern this might be a part of a larger strategy. The Chinese would love to access the U.S. market because there are profits to be made in the U.S. market. Getting in directly to the United States market is tricky uh, because of the tariffs and other obstacles. And so I think many of these Chinese automakers look at Mexico as a backdoor in the United States of America. Washington has just to be clear, <laughs> they are talking about a backdoor for vehicles, not for illegal immigrants to flood in via the cartel from all over the world, because that would never uh, Moving on. Now, I do just want to say something at this juncture. They ain't fucking around. The Chinese EV makers are very serious about mass production of electric vehicles in Mexico. In their ideal scenario, of course, they'll be selling those in the US, but also into other markets globally. I'm not exactly sure what Comrade Carmela would do if for some strange reason, she ends up as the next United States president. In that situation, all bets are off. But the current Biden administration slapped a massive tariff on Chinese-made electric vehicles. There's been discussion about 100% or more. Trump's also said similar things. I'm personally not a fan of these ridiculous tariffs, but I understand the thinking. If you want to protect American manufacturing and American manufacturing jobs and American products, then sure, fuck the consumers over by slapping massive tariffs on high quality products made overseas and then they're not cost effective to bring them in. It's not fair to consumers, but if your goal is to protect jobs, protect manufacturing, I understand. I'm not a fan of it. Just like I'm not a fan of these totally unnecessary EV tax incentives. Just let the market figure shit out. Bro, that said, even with extremely aggressive, and I'm talking like 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100% plus tariffs, it will still, in some situations, be cost competitive for Chinese EV manufacturers mass producing electric vehicles in Mexico to sell a portion of that product in the United States. Much lower labor costs in Mexico, much cheaper to get a factory built, much faster to get a factory built. So even with obscene tariffs, I'd be concerned if I was a legacy automotive manufacturer in the United States. Now, how would this affect Tesla other than the Gigafactory in Mexico, which we'll get to? Ridiculous tariffs, making it obscenely expensive to purchase Chinese made electric vehicles is a huge win for Tesla because Tesla's only meaningful quote competition is from Chinese EV manufacturers and it will be in the future. And when I say competition, I don't actually mean competition. Those companies will not catch Tesla in terms of the value, the price performance, what you actually get, the safety tech, but they will be producing affordable, fairly decent electric vehicles that some consumers will choose. If it becomes prohibitively expensive for US consumers to buy fairly affordable, compelling-ish electric vehicles from China because they're now extremely unaffordable because of insane tariffs, and legacy automotive manufacturers are going bankrupt one after the other because they can't mass produce EVs profitably at scale and compete with Tesla, where does that leave US consumers? And where it leaves them is where things were five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years ago. If you want a great, affordable electric vehicle, within reason, your only choice is a Tesla. This could be the best possible thing that could happen for Tesla, but I don't like it. As I said, I, I don't like these tariffs. I just don't like it. Now, before we get back to the video, one final point on this, which is very, 
Very important. Tesla Giga Mexico currently on hold for good reason. If Tesla's intent was eventually to mass produce robot taxis in Mexico as well, and they're more affordable vehicle, yet they're going to be slapped with, let's just say, like 100% tariff or more, bringing those back into the US, it'll be far more cost effective to just scale up production massively at Giga Texas. So here's the question. Given that Donald Trump is repeatedly in every rally that he does now, talking about Elon Musk, how he loves Tesla, they make amazing products, Elon's great, we should support smart people like Elon, he's a big manufacturer, he loves the guy and so on, their recent discussion on X over two hours, trillions of impressions roughly on that conversation as well, clearly they have a solid working relationship, Musk is possibly going to be involved in a government efficiency commission under a Trump presidency, assuming no late mail comes in after pipes burst and so on. So what are the odds that there'll be some discussion about the Gigafactory in Mexico if Trump becomes president? And the odds are 100%. One of the first things that will happen between Musk and Trump's like, uh, so, yo, uh, Orange Man bad. Yes, Elon bad. What's up, bro? Well, Orange Man bad, you see, we bought this land in Mexico. We're going to build this factory here and make fuck tons of affordable robo taxis and next-gen vehicles for American consumers to buy and also sell some. But, but see, this whole tariff thing that you're thinking about slapping on foreign-made vehicles, that's kind of going to be bad for us. And Trump will say, well, I really want the manufacturing jobs in the United States, Elon. Because Elon says, well, yeah, bro, I already employ like, 10 trillion people in the US. But I'm just saying, like, it'd be better for the consumers here to have the choice if we can make those as well. And Orange Man Bad says, well, maybe we can figure out a deal. After all, Orange Man Bad has a lot of experience in making deals. Until, however, the 2024 US presidential election has been decided, guarantee Tesla's plans in Mexico are absolutely on hold. There's a little bit of lingering uncertainty here. I got, like I said, I've got no idea what Comrade Carmela would do. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I, bro, maybe she'll literally try and make these companies give their vehicles away for free. But the bigger picture that's happening here right now, Chinese EV manufacturers have been investing aggressively in Mexico. And you better believe they want to start selling vehicles in the United States. Built a wall to block cheap exports using tariffs. But experts say these may only be buying time. This is a Chinese version of a Godzilla. Get ready. This thing's coming and it's going to shake up the world. So how has Mexico become a hotspot for Chinese auto companies? And will the country become a pathway for these cars to drive into the U.S.? Chinese automakers are winning over millions of drivers around the world. Last year, China produced over half of all electric vehicles sold worldwide. Supported by government subsidies and lagging domestic demand, Chinese EV makers have had to look overseas to sell their cars. Last year, China overtook Japan to become the world's largest auto exporter, sending 4.9 million cars overseas. And 1.2 million of those cars were electric. China has built up such automotive production capacity that it can't possibly sell all of those vehicles in China, so it has to look to other markets. Almost overnight, Mexico has become a major market. Chinese automakers are um, becoming more international. So Mexico fits in this broader story of Chinese companies trying to access new markets. In 2023, the country was the leading importer of cars made in China. Oh, by the way, in case it needs to be said, Mexico is a great place to manufacture vehicles to be sold in South America. You kind of knew that already, right? Not exclusively in South America, but geographically speaking, it's not too far to ship them. Importing a total of $4.6 billion worth of Chinese vehicles. That's compared to $4.4 billion from US-based companies. In May, BYD launched a brand new hybrid pickup truck in Mexico. It was the first time the company had debuted a new product outside of China. And Mexican consumers are quickly embracing Chinese-made EVs. Last year, one in 10 vehicles sold in Mexico were made by a Chinese company, outpacing every other foreign country. Even consumers weary of electric cars are drawn to Chinese EVs for their affordable price tags. BYD sells its Dolphin Mini in Mexico for around 398,000 pesos. That's around $21,000, a little less than half the price of the cheapest Tesla. The Chinese automakers came to the country very aggressively. They uh, have, to be honest, very good promotions. Chinese cars, it's a good product uh, that sells at a very reasonable price. Experts say China's entrance to Mexico follows a broader strategy to target emerging economies, which can be friendlier to foreign investment. Latin America, parts of Asia, and the Middle East have all seen influxes of Chinese-made cars in recent years. 
unlike the developed economies, uh, the emerging ones are m less complicated, less complex in terms of regulations. And I'm talking about safety standards or emissions standards. The dude's right, and understandably so. Developing nations have higher priorities than over-regulation of safety, environmental factors, and so on. Meaning, you can get stuff sold, produced much more affordably there, because they don't have the same high standards. And you can also get stuff done a lot faster and cheaper there. Just deliver the right paper bags filled with the stuff that you need to have in brown paper bags to the right people, and suddenly you can build a factory in no time. <laughs> Rules can change, whatever you need done. And to the point regarding safety, as I've said many, many times, comparable things are true in China. A lot of the vehicles being produced in China by Tesla's so-called competition there and sold for half the cost don't have the same extremely stringent high standards for safety, performance and other things as a Tesla vehicle. Tesla holds themselves to an extremely high standard. That's why they're not yet able to produce vehicles for the comparable prices to companies like BYD. They could if they were to sacrifice safety and certain features and all sorts of other stuff. So the Chinese car makers, if you look at the figures, they are gaining traction faster in those economies than in the developed economies. For example, Latin America, which the current government in Brazil was was uh, quite enthusiastic about welcoming BYD's newest investment. They now have a factory in Brazil that they're building. Similarly, I think the biggest recipient of Chinese um, investment in terms of new electric vehicle factories is Thailand. So usually these companies go where they're welcome. Earlier this year, multiple Chinese automakers have announced plans to open EV factories in Mexico. Mexican states Durango, Jalisco, and Nuevo Leon have even offered incentives to Chinese automakers to open manufacturing operations. Now, clearly, if cities, states, countries, regions are offering incentives for Chinese manufacturers, the same would be true for Tesla. In fact, I would argue that Tesla's likely to be getting the best possible deals from anywhere on Earth. The prestige that comes with Tesla, the credibility, the track record, the economic effect of having a Tesla factory in your town, your city, your state, your province? I have no doubt that privately, behind closed doors, Tesla's received countless offers from just about every country on the fucking planet. Please come here. We beg you, build a factory. We will make it easy for you, affordable for you, please. And eventually the time will come when Tesla can mass produce much more affordable electric vehicles. You can bet there'll be factories all over the place. Tax breaks, free land, and help hiring labor. Experts say this process of nearshoring, or bringing production closer to the final target market, would benefit both parties. For Mexico, the factories would bring jobs and limit the cost of importing so many cars. For Chinese companies, they could increase a foothold in the North American market. But this is what has Washington worried. Mexico is already a manufacturing powerhouse, serving as a hub for many international auto brands. Tesla has been exploring manufacturing sites in the country, although plans are on hold for now. This started in the mid-90s with the signing of the North America Free Trade Agreement, or NAFTA, which removed tariffs on many goods traded between the US, Mexico, and Canada. The big winners were auto companies. The most recent iteration of the trade agreement was enacted by Donald Trump in 2018. It's called the US-Mexico-Canada Agreement, or the USMCA. First, the Germans came, you know, Audi, uh, BMW, and then the Japanese came, Toyota, Honda, and then lastly, the Koreans came, Hyundai, Kia, and others. Some people now are arguing that the next wave is going to be driven by Chinese companies. Mexico is an attractive production platform, uh, not only for Chinese companies, but for other companies as well, in part because of that free trade access that it has to the American market. And it can do something that in trade terms is called circumvention. In order to sell its overcapacity of cars, China needs to access wealthier markets like the US and Europe. But so far in the US, they've been blocked by tariffs and political tension. To get around these barriers, China could take advantage of the USMCA. It would look something like this. If a Chinese auto company were to set up operations in Mexico or Canada, and prove that the majority of materials that they use to build their cars are sourced locally, they could export their cars into the US market virtually duty-free for EV production, Chinese automakers have narrowed in on Mexico for its manufacturing infrastructure, low labor costs, and most importantly, proximity to the US. It's a strategy that Chinese companies have used before. 
For more than a decade now, China and the United States have been playing a high-stakes game of whack-a-mole when it comes to trade policy tariffs and trying to get into the market. And we've seen China do this in other types of manufacturing, from appliances to auto parts to steel. And so autos is the next logical sector for China to scale up investment in Mexico. It's a potential scenario that terrifies U.S. officials and automakers. If they're able to do that, set up in Mexico to manufacture the United States, they would definitely pose an imminent threat to American automakers. If for no other reason, because their costs would be lower. Really, the most lucrative market in the world, in a lot of ways, is the American market. We're only 5% of the world's population, but we consume 20% of the world's goods. We are great at consumption, and Americans like a deal. And if they were to see a Chinese-made EV that comes in at fifteen dollars or $20,000, they're very price-motivated, and these things could potentially wipe out a lot of the U.S. competition. No lies detected. For now, none of the major Chinese automakers have begun building factories in Mexico and many have stalled plans, citing tension with the U.S. The sentiment among the Chinese automakers I've talked to is that things are so tense between the U.S. and China right now that now's not the right time to come and invest in the U.S. Not the right time politically, just too much tension. Mexican government officials have likewise paused incentives to Chinese automakers. BYD has publicly walked back intentions to enter the U.S. market at least for now. They're not ready. But then for BYD, we are ready. The USMCA is set to be reviewed in 2026, and who leads that discussion from the White House remains up in the air. At the Republican National Convention in July, Donald Trump made a pitch for Chinese companies to set up shop in the US if he were to become president. Those plants are gonna be built in the United States and our people are going to man those plants. I know, and look, I, I, I've heard uh, Donald Trump say a couple of times that he wants to see those Chinese companies come to the United States. I think that would be a massive mistake. Experts say this could be detrimental to the American auto industry. When you Oh, I get it, because these companies can't cost competitively mass manufacture in the United States, therefore they have to do it outside and then bring it back in, e.g. made in Mexico from a U.S. company. They might have a point excluding Tesla, who obviously are profitably producing many electric vehicles in the United States. I think the real loser here would be consumers. The legacy auto companies are fucked either way. And as I've said, I don't like the tariffs. I don't like the government fucking around and interfering in people's choice, freedom to choose what they want and pay a good price. However, from a Tesla investor's point of view, massive tariffs on made in Mexico and made in China and made anywhere outside the United States, electric vehicles or otherwise, would be the best thing that could possibly happen for Tesla, even if... It gently fucks Tesla a little bit due to their Giga Mexico plans. I know this sounds kind of crazy, but I do want to underscore this point. Insane tariffs on made in Mexico, made in China electric vehicles coming into the United States will be the best possible thing to happen to Tesla. It will absolutely destroy any hope the Chinese EV manufacturers have of selling electric vehicles in any meaningful volume in the United States. And their legacy companies are already fucked, so they're not in the conversation. And if there's no tariffs, it's even better for Tesla because they'll be able to start producing vehicles in Mexico and selling them in the United States. Lower cost to produce, lower cost to consumers. It's a weird situation in which even doing something that in theory on paper should hurt Tesla is great for Tesla, and doing something that doesn't hurt Tesla is also great for Tesla. But here's the thing, here's my bet. Assuming no late mail and burst pipes under a Trump administration, Trump and Musk will work something out so Tesla can proceed with the Giga Mexico factory and eventually sell product from Mexico into the United States and elsewhere. But, hey, what would I know? I'm just some guy with some opinions on the internet. Want more content? Early access? A bunch of perks? Click the links in the pinned comment. AG1 is awesome. I've been taking it daily now for more than three years. It's a great way to fill in nutritional gaps. It's packed full of vitamins, minerals, and whole food source nutrients. Plus, it has prebiotics, probiotics, and adaptogens to improve gut health, regularity, and help your body handle stress. I'm always looking for an edge to help me feel and perform my best, which is why I haven't missed a day of AG1 for more than three years. And I haven't missed a daily video in more than three years. Must be a coincidence, right? Just try it and see how you feel. Click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR and get yourself a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 and five travel packs. But 
Don't take my word for it. This is what viewers of the channel had to say after trying AG1. I feel like I have a lot more energy since I started on AG1. By the way, viewer, that makes two of us. On to the next. Just got my AG1 in the mail. Legit feeling the effects after day three. This viewer's been taking AG1 for eight months and says, what an investment. Another. Three months ago, I started AG1 and have been enjoying the evenness of alertness and energy that lasts the day. I just started the wife on it too. Are you convinced yet? I mean, hey, it's worth trying, right? Click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR or I can keep going. Plenty more to come. This viewer, after about a month on AG1, definitely a lack of fatigue in the afternoon. Pleasant side effect is that my coffee intake has imploded and is almost down to zero. One more. Yeah, why not? I honestly feel younger and will be continuing to use AG1. This stuff really is crazy good. I didn't think it would be, but this stuff is awesome. It really is what everyone is saying. One more. Don't mind if I do. I've just received my third month supply. I've drank it every day. I have so much energy throughout most of the day. I'm productive, started a new business, started socializing, refurbished a boat. It's no coincidence. Thank you for your persistence, your integrity, and your insights. Now look, these are not my words. These are not my testimonials. This is what you guys and girls are saying. Maybe it's 100% placebo effect. But even if that's the case, I think it's money well spent. Click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR and get yourself a free one year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 and five travel packs. If you're still skeptical, hey, I don't blame you. Everyone on the planet seems to be promoting AG1 now, but guess what? They weren't nearly three years ago when I had this to say privately to my Patreon audience before there was a relationship when I was asked about what I was doing for my health, energy, and so on. Just sharing my genuine, honest thoughts about a product I'd recently discovered that was at the time called Athletic Greens. Now, AG1. If I could only recommend one supplement to take, Athletic Greens, and I'm not getting paid to say this, Athletic Greens is a fucking game changer. I just, I cannot believe how effective this is. No longer having a lack of energy in the afternoons. It's fucking amazing. There's only one thing to recommend seriously, try Athletic Greens. You won't go back. So obviously, just like Elon Musk is a liar, a fraud, a con man, a scammer, a fake engineer, and Tesla's going bankrupt, you shouldn't trust that guy from about three years ago who, without any financial incentive, was promoting this product to his audience on Patreon when they were asking about health and what he's doing for supplements. Because obviously, there was some other reason he recommended that, obviously. I'm not sure what it was, but don't trust that guy. And all the testimonials, like my mental game has improved with AG1. I feel better than ever. I'm so impressed I've bought it for both my parents. I feel more focused and have better digestion. Incredible difference. No more afternoon fatigue. It's relieved gut issues. These are all just obviously fake testimonials from fake people. Right? Wrong. Just try it. Unless you hate yourself. If you hate yourself and you don't even want to risk possibly feeling better, this is not for you. But for everyone else, what's the worst could happen? Try it for a month. See how you feel. It's a no-brainer. Just click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR. You'll get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 and K2 plus five travel packs. And you'll take the colossal risk that maybe you might have a similar experience to some of the people whose testimonials we've read in this video.